Hey, this is Mark Peach doing my second video episode. Uh, I wanted to start with one of my all-time favorite authors who I mentioned in my first video, if you could even hear it, because the audio sounded okay when I was listening to it with my headphones, but then with just my laptop speakers, I could barely hear it on YouTube, and I also had a lot of problems with converting it and trying to change it because YouTube kept putting it out of sync. But at least it's in sync, so if you have good speakers or headphones, you should be able to hear it fine. That's assuming anyone's even going to be watching in the first place. But anyway, I am going to do some quick reviews of all of the books by my favorite author, Jane Austen. This is her first book published. I'm going to be doing them in publishing order. Sense and Sensibility. Uh, this book, actually, when I first read it a few years ago, was my, I considered it my least favorite of all of the Jane Austen books for some reason. Uh, I just thought, in comparison to her others, it was a little bit on the depressing side and sad. I didn't really like the um, male heroes. There's a... Uh, Edward Ferrers and Colonel Brandon, because this one has, unlike her others, well, two heroines. There's Eleanor Dashwood and Marianne Dashwood, who are sisters. Um, this isn't a place for a synopsis, because I don't have time. But anyway, so they each get a guy, and I didn't like Edward Ferrers. I thought Colonel Brandon was dull as dishwater, nice guy, but boring. And I couldn't stand Marianne, the younger sister. Uh, when I reread it last year, though, I'm like, oh my god, is this the same book? It was hilariously funny. Eleanor Dashwood, who you mainly get the story from her point of view, she's really the main protagonist. She, I thought, she's so hilariously, like, snarky and just has all of these you know, sarcastic, witty, um, not so much criticisms, but opinions about people, and she doesn't necessarily let it show, but she's very much the the sense in the book. She um, doesn't wear her heart on her sleeve, yet still it was hilarious. I really, I, there's a lot of humor. Um, Colonel Brandon grew on me. I really got to see how he's actually a romantic at heart. Uh, Edward, I can kind of appreciate a little bit more, like he was always trying to do the right thing, but he's still probably my least favorite Austin hero. Um, and the writing in this, admittedly, this was her first published book. It was not up to the standard of her later ones. It's very dialogue heavy. Um, just not necessarily bad, but it, she didn't quite reach her peak yet. Uh, I would give it on the whole a 9 out of 10 for Sense and Sensibility. Next we have probably the most famous and popular Pride and Prejudice. This is not my least or not my favorite Jane Austen book but it's up there. It was the first of her books that I ever read when I was probably right around 10 years ago when I was uh, in high school or still in middle school, around there. I don't remember exactly. I really enjoy this book. It's like all of her books, it's full of, you know, social satire and humor. Um, I love all the side characters. It's really got a nice love story. It's really, it's pretty, you know, light, bright, and sparkling is how Austin herself described it. This, however, is not my top favorite. Um, the characters of Elizabeth and Darcy, who are pretty much universally the, if you ask anyone, they are going to be the favorite Jane Austen characters and couple. They're not my favorite. Um, Elizabeth Bennet, in the beginning especially, is very, well, both Darcy and Elizabeth are proud and prejudiced, especially in the beginning. Elizabeth has her prejudices and She's not a bad person, but, you know, she always, she thinks that her first impressions are just always right, and she feels like she's more mature and kind of wise than she actually is, 
and then it's through their uh, kind of relations or <laughs> not that kind of thing. It's through you know their relationship with each other that they both you know learn and grow from their experience, and they become you know they lose the pride and prejudices. So it's not just Darcy is is the common thing. It's Elizabeth and Darcy. So I really like how they are dynamic characters and they grow and change. And I would give it a 10 out of 10, but it's not my number one. The next book is probably the universally least liked Austin novel, Mansfield Park. Uh, this is probably everybody's least most people's least favorite because it's not as romantic as her other books it's a little bit not quite depressing but it's not as light-hearted and most people seem to hate the two main characters uh, the protagonist Fanny Price is more of like a doormat type of character at least in the beginning um, she's accused of always I hear the criticisms priggish and insipid and Edmund Bertram, her cousin and true love, is, I hear, kind of the same-ish type of criticisms of him. People also usually like the bad characters, the Crawfords, in this book more, because they're charming. Um, I don't fall into that category. I really admire Fanny Price, even though Edmund does get on my nerves. She, I can see how in the beginning... It's she. I would be annoyed with her, but she really has a strong inner strength, and she goes against you know what her family and what everyone wants her to do, and I feel like it wouldn't have had the same emotional impact or resonance if she had always been so outspoken as Elizabeth Bennet. But because she was so you know quiet and perceived as weak, when she does stand up for herself, I feel like it has more of an impact. And I would have liked a little bit more romance, but you can't have everything. I would still give Mansfield Park an 8 out of 10. Next book I have is Emma, which was her Jane Austen's last novel to be published during her lifetime. I really love Emma. It's another one. It's going to be in my top three Emma herself, I find a little bit annoying, but I love the hero, uh, Mr. Knightley. I didn't really used to. It's usual, has the comedy and everything. The romance is really good in this book because they start out as, you know, friends, and then they kind of realize, especially late for Emma, that, you know, they, their feelings grow and change to romantic love. It, this book has also been a lot of times referred to as a detective novel without a murder. It's kind of like secret romantic relationships in this, which I find very interesting. And I, it's not a mystery book, but you, you, you can, if you read it, you can tell what I'm talking about. So I'm going to give Emma 10 out of 10 stars. The next book is Northanger Abbey. This was published posthumously along with persuasion and it was actually her first completed novel that was uh, she sold the rights to a publisher but they just sat on it and never published it I think because it was originally titled Susan and then there was another book published at the time called Susan so there were issues with that and after her death I believe Jane Austen's brother finally he got bought the rights back and sold it to another publisher got to be published this book is very different from the rest of her books. Um, I don't believe she revised it later on, so it's a little bit, uh, her style wasn't quite up to par with the later books, even less so than Sense and Sensibility. And it's more of a spoof of the gothic novel that was really popular around the time Jane Austen was writing, uh, especially and Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho. Um, I really love the hero in this, Henry Tilney. I think, as I said, I think he's hilarious and so funny. I love Henry. Catherine, the main character, is pretty immature and naive and gullible, and I don't 
uh, really care for her that much, but I, d I think the book wouldn't have been as funny if it had been a more mature heroine, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's a really good, it's a really good funny book, but it's just, uh, it doesn't have the depth of her other works, so I, it's actually my least favorite Austin novel, and I can only give it 7 out of 10 stars. And the last completed novel also published after her death is Persuasion, which I already mentioned is my all-time favorite Jane Austen book. I love this one. It's definitely, I feel like it's the most romantic of all her books. It really has a strong emotional impact for me. It's about a couple who, you know, they were engaged in the past. She broke it off, and now they meet again, and it's, it's like, does, can you recapture a long-lost love? Basically, is all hope lost? It has usual funny side characters and everything, and I really love the main couple, Anne and Wentworth. In this one, they're, well, she is... Anne is older than Austin's other heroine. She's 27, which now wouldn't be a big deal at all. But back then, she was bordering on spinsterhood. Um, I love how she... It's a story of kind of regaining her youth and bloom when she thought, you know, she was getting old and tired. She really wasn't. I have to give... Oh, also, before I finish, uh, the letter that Wentworth writes at the end is one of the most beautiful romantic things I've ever read. If a guy ever wrote me something like that, I would probably swoon. It makes me want to just read it, and I'm not a savvy person. 10 out of 10 stars for Persuasion. And that is all of Jane Austen's novels, but before I finish, I have this other book, which is titled Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sanditon. This is a compilation of, first, Lady Susan is actually a novella that Austen wrote, and it's an epistolary style novella about Lady Susan, who is actually kind of a villainous character as a pro protagonist. She's very, like, evil snob, and she tries to manipulate men and even everyone's life around her, including her own daughter. And that was really interesting because that's not, like, any of Jane Austen's other stuff. I think it was really, really different to read. Then the Watsons and Sanditon are both, um fragments of novels that Jane Austen started and didn't or couldn't finish. Um, the Watsons, she didn't write because her father died at the time, and I guess it was just too depressing for her. This seems like it was on track to being way more depressing than all of Austen's other books, so I can kind of see why uh, she couldn't finish that one. There's really... I'm really interested to see how it could have been, but whatever. Um, Sanditon, she actually died, so that was why. This is a later book, and it takes place at a uh, health spa town, the fictional town of Sanditon, and it's really, it seems like it's more modern, and it was really, you know, showing a commentary of, you know, the modernizing life at the time. And I actually did read a continuation of this by Jane Austen and Another Lady, which I thought was pretty good, so I would recommend that if you read these fragments and you want to read more Sanditon. The author was pretty close to Jane Austen's style. You can, I mean, you can tell it's not really her, but I would recommend that all the same. This book, I can't really, I guess I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I can't really rate in, you know, just fragments. It's kind of hard to do that. Um, anyway, so that was all of my Jane Austen book reviews in a nutshell. If you want to read full reviews, you can read my blog, uh, Peach Reviews at WordPress.com. Thank you.